Japanese esports is the sleeping giant that is awakening right now. Esports is growing really quickly. And so when you have a video game saturated market with a passion for gaming and a technologically savvy and sophisticated country, you typically see esports coming very quickly. So the opportunity is here. I am incredibly impressed by the organization of NESCONF, uh, by the hospitality of Bantan, as well as the people of the conference in general and the people in Japan. I think it's about the value. I think it's, it's teaching the, the young generation that gaming and esports can be your career, can lead you to something that before you just never believed that being a professional gamer could you make you a better person. And nowadays when you introduce that to a young age, when you introduce to a high school level, even before that, you teach those values to the young generations that they can thrive for something real related to gaming and esports. It's uh, exciting that all the seats are full and that people are here to observe. I expected that some of the people would be from game publishers and developers, but actually most of the audience is from various uh, aspects of the esports industry, and this means it's something that's interesting for everybody, so I guess it's the right time for this conference here. いわゆるガラパゴス化に近いものがもしかしたら出てくるかなと思ってて70以上も e スポーツの団体が日本で乱立していてこんな面白いシーンって他の国ではなかなかないんですよ本当は本当ゲーム好きだったらゲーム作ったらいいですよねみんな<笑>ただ作れない人たちも当然いるし作るのが苦手な人たちもいるからじゃあその人たちがどうやったらゲーム産業とかゲーム業界と一緒にいられるのかなっていうのは。でこの e スポーツムーブメントってそれがすごくいい形で芽吹いていくと e スポーツっていうフィルターをかけることでなんか会社で遊んでもいいらしいぞみたいになってきたんでそれはそれですごいハッピーなんじゃないかと思います。So the big issue with the e s p o r t right now is that it's very top heavy and we wanted to create something for the lower tier teams to compete and actually have a way to earn money. As far as it goes for e s p o r t s in Japan, I think that is definitely on the rise. It's not as big as, for example, esports in the Philippines or in Malaysia, Indonesia, Thailand. More traditional gaming, I think, is bigger in Japan, but it's definitely on the rise. In terms of esports specifically, I think you have this really cool combination of traditional sports and esports, where if you look at a lot of the top tier teams, they have like managers, they have chefs, they have Um, a psychologist, sometimes a, a doctor, even some teams here. Um, so you're going to have to uh, to train these people specifically for esports because the demands are different, right? That's something unique to esports that Vantan can definitely look into. Uh, support staff for teams. もっともっと大きくなるだろうとでそういう時に法律的な問題も結構あるというのを感じた時にじゃあ僕はこれをちゃんとクリアにしてもしくはもっとよりいいプラクティスをちゃんと提供できるんじゃないかなと規制とビジネスがぶつかるような場面だとあんまりそういうところを学術的に論じる方がいないのでそういう立場をまず我々が取ると韓国の発展の例を見ているか韓国は非常にそういう e スポーツのカフェをたくさん作って、えー、と非常に親しめられるようになったという歴史があるので、まあ、それを日本でやるためにはあのそういった施設をしっかり作れるような体制は整えていきたいなというふうに思っています。If we are looking ahead in 10 or 15 years, maybe kids at that time e-sport will be much more established than today, and then kids maybe won't become an e-sports manager on the sea level, other than to become a lawyer. And I think this is a very realistic way in the future because esports is growing, it will be established. And if you understand esports is part of the digital revolution that happens now and it goes to every level of our society, there are changes and there are opportunities. And please think 10 years or 15 years ahead.